It's Chris Fade and Caroline Stabry's Not So Epic Podcast. Brought to you by NMC Healthcare and Cosmic Surge. Head to CosmicSurge.com. Welcome back to Chris and Caroline. Not so a big podcast. And we're back. It is good. It feels good to be back. I feel like I haven't seen you for a while. Well, it's 2020. Hey. We're here. We're here together. Yes, I've missed you. Do you brought a guest with you? I have brought a guest. I'm very excited to bring this guest. So <laughs> I met Kota at Formula One yep. um, in Abu Dhabi. And so um, I wanted to bring him on because he is four times world champion Scooter. She right? says it's so <laughs> Scooter. Am I sure how to say oh, yeah. it? Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> Thank you, man. At, at Scooter. How about that? You, I, I can't, I, I have no balance, so I can't do what he does. I, it, crazy how the world works. Um, I know Grant Cardone yeah. pretty well. And I was on his Instagram just yeah. following it. Saw that you guys were together. Yep. Then started looking at your stuff. This was like. A couple of days ago. Probably. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, man, this guy's crazy. Look what he's doing. <laughs> Damn. Caroline calls me up, says, hey, we've got a guest on the podcast, ends up being you. It's funny how the world works. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know Scooters had championships. I'm fascinated. It's oh, yeah, that's you, huge sport. It's huge. And if we can edit into the podcast right now, which we will, just take a look at some of this footage of what he does. It's unbelievable. How did this see, would you start off as a hobby, I'm guessing, or just as yeah, a kid? So, and then- I mean, as a kid, uh, I pretty much did every sport, like normal sports and action sports. And one day... I just went to the skate park and saw a kid on a scooter when I was 10. And I, from then on, rode a scooter every day, practice and progress. But it was cool because when I started scootering, it w- wasn't really a sport. It was just f- a few kids around the world having fun and trying new tricks. So as I progressed, the sport progressed with me. And so like when there was a new competition, I was the first person at the competition or winning the, the biggest event. So it's cool to get to travel and progress in my career as well as promote the sport from the ground up. See, my question is, do you invent the moves? Because if you gave me that scooter and I had it for five years, my scooter would never leave the floor. <laughs> it would just be, I would just use that thing to yeah, go and straight. Over time, I've got to invent a lot of tricks because we are always at the forefront of scootering and making new tricks and uh, the biggest ramps. And so we're always had the opportunity to land stuff before anybody else. And uh, definitely I've had fun in my career and I got to do a lot of amazing things so far. How do you uh, think of a new move? Um, no, no, good question. I think it depends on your the size of the ramp. So like if you increase the size of the ramp, we have more airtime. So in the last recent years, they built something called the mega ramp, which is probably, I don't know the exact specs, but I think it's like 80 feet tall, the drop in. And then the gap is like 50 feet. So imagine you have three or four seconds of airtime. So you can pretty much do anything I'm you just, can think of. I'm here trying to imagine Chris on a scooter. Oh, we have a scooter. <laughs> We've got a scooter any, out here. Any, yeah. any. Time. <laughs> no way. I bought it because I bought the kids no. a couple of scooters. And when I was on it, I just felt like it wouldn't do anything for really? me. Like I'm jumping up and it, I think, I don't think it's leaving the ground. I think I am. <laughs> and I think I'm just landing on it. Um, are, is it modified? Are these scooters modified in so you can do what you got to do with them? Yeah. Like, so what are the wheels? What are the, are the wheels hard? The wheels are urethane. So it's like a normal like rollerblade or skateboard type wheel. So how do you, um, when you land, the, I mean, aren't you, isn't wait, your body feeling that yet? The com- Knees, yeah. yeah. Are you going into the normal shop and buying a normal scooter? No. So, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of ours are modified, but you can buy the modified scooters pretty easily. Like at X Dubai Skate Park, they sell a lot or things like that. So over the years, I've got to help design and make my own scooters that work as I want and the right measurements, the right materials. And so um, it's cool to be able to develop so much stuff. He showed me the X Dubai one. Do you know how much a sco- scooter park? cost to build how much over a million dollars the scooter park yeah million dollars i think it cost three million of, wasn't it what really three million i don't know i, I remember that, it being a lot that is a lot of that is a lot of i mean i'm guessing but the ones back in the states and in australia aren't costing three million bucks no, they, they cost are. a lot she's saying they cost really? a lot yeah. yeah the concrete i had no idea i literally had no idea it was like okay Do you know in it? australia they have a rule every so many people they have to build a skate park what Really? Yeah. It's like a, in the law. It yeah, says every so many people, you have to build a skate park per mile or that per makes sense 10 miles. Because so. growing up, we would have skate parks everywhere. everywhere. Like every community has something. Yeah. Like a little skate park, a wood skate park, a concrete skate park. Have you been to the one at Bondi Beach? Have you been to Sydney before? I, I've spent a lot of time. Okay, so you've been to, have you done the one on Bondi Beach? Yeah, it's, it's not that good. No, it's not it's good. It's a nice location, but the skate park's not is that it good. Is it really? The best skate park in Australia is in Canberra, like the capital. The capital. Really? It's amazing. Do, do skaters 
and what you do do you guys look at each other as competitors or as a team or do they do you guys look at each other differently and be like look what he's on um i would say okay so you have two different sports that doing the same thing at the skate park like having fun on your mode of transport whatever you pick you could be on a bike a scooter a skateboard but the main thing the main issue people find in scootering is like your kids at two could be on a scooter and have fun so you find a lot of little kids at the skate park just because a scooter is easily accessible and fun sure. they just happen to be on a scooter so skateboarders tend to complain that scooters get in the way but that's just because it's a little kid on a scooter of course if they're on a skateboard it'd be the same problem can you do things on a skateboard yeah i can do almost every action sport it's relatively the same like it's if you don't have bars you just figure out what to do with your feet or bmx is like a scooter just heavier wow so you could do those flips on a bike yeah stop it why it's the same yeah i know i'm uh, i as i get older as i've explained to caroline on this podcast i become uh less adventurous okay. and less willing to do <laughs> because anything because he was hanging from high rises when it's i you. wasn't even yeah. doing that but like, i won't even jump out of a plane now like i'm done well, would oh, you, you go skydiving absolutely not no no i've been asked to go skydiving a bunch of times by skydiving yeah. by and yeah no, there's no chance I'll go skydiving. I think we should go skydiving on nah, this podcast. I'm can't do it. Yeah, can't do it. it. Have you gone skydiving, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's, yeah. probably just did it now. No, did you go? No, I, I'm so scared. I do think it. I want to do it. Like, in my head, I'm doing You'd it. You'd be able then, to do it. Then, I, then I'm thinking, what, if, what happens if I pee my pants on the way down? That's what you're, I'm thinking about if I die. <laughs> what happens with my kids? <laughs> you're like, if I pee my pants. I, it's a very possible thing. You but it's, so it's crazy because you, you're the most scared of your life before you jump out of the plane. You jump out, you, like, accept death. And then you're like, this is the coolest what? thing ever. You accept No, because you're, you're falling death. from the sky, from the plane to the ground. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do it. You know, my, I'd the, rather do that, sorry, than a bungee jump. I would not bungee jump. Yeah, I mean, no, if, right. I had the choice, if I had to do one, I yeah. would probably go skydiving. Yeah, but I think what I've realized as Wait. I get older. But, sorry, why would you not? That's real sketchy. Really? You're having yeah, yeah. something tied to your ankles and you're jumping towards the ground. And you're yeah. a guy that does all this other <laughs> ridiculous yeah, 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 I on a scooter you. with no ropes. <laughs> yeah. But I think like... And, and let's see if anyone else is in the same boat. I, if I'm not in control of a situation, that's when I feel like I get a little anxious. So yeah. when I'm in an airplane, for example, even just flying, I, there's sometimes a little bit of anxiety there because I have no control over the situation. No. I am now just sitting in this seat and it's in their hands. <laughs> you so don't know the pilot. You don't I don't know, know the pilot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything. You know, I don't know how it is. And, yeah. you know, I said to, and that, as is skydiving, if I'm strapped onto someone, <laughs> Why are you strapped? Oh, sorry. I thought you meant in the plane. I'm like, who strapped you to anyone? <laughs> yeah, no. If I'm skydiving, I'm strapped onto a guy that has total control over what's yeah. going to happen now. And yeah. it's my life is in his hands. That's why I feel that I feel, yeah. you know? No, yeah, you, have, you have the cord. No. No, no, no. Don't the you? first couple jumps, you have to go with an instructor. But yeah. don't you have a cord as well? Yeah, but they pull it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, we got to pull the... We know what to do. I wouldn't even know what to do. So, can we talk uh, injuries? Yeah. Because uh, there'd be a few, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, mostly it's not much broken bones. It's more concussions and, like, like uh, torn things. But, I mean, more than anything, the problem with action sports like NFL or anything is, like, concussions. Because, like, no matter what, you can't really get out of it because sometime you're going to hit your head. No matter if you're in a helmet, not a helmet. Uh, Do so you always I think wear I've a helmet? Got, oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Probably got three concussions all from double backflips or double something because like if you over flip it, oh you have so much momentum. And then if you don't get the wheels right, you just smack your head and then it just kind of it cracks your helmet. Do you wear a neck brace or anything like that? No, just helmet, right. knee pads and a mouthpiece. See, Chris is a hypochondriac, so he does wear a ne true. neck brace. It's true, and I'm hypochondriac. Yes. No, so I'm really not, there's no word of a lie. But so I've always, uh, I've always wondered when you're in the motion of doing those backflips. No. Do you know where you are? Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, so you know what's like, going on. I feel on. more comfortable upside down than normal. Wow. So do I. Like, if you put me on a, <laughs> like put me on a trampoline or at a skate park, like, you know, I have pretty good air awareness, and that's if you do a lot of flips, you just get used to it. Did you like, hear that? Air that's awareness. What it's like, like skydivers, like, they know exactly where the ground is or where what's so happening. So if, if you are in a position where you realize that you're not, you you know if you're in the right position at the same yeah. time. So you know. Because oh, oh, most of the tricks, like when you do a backflip with tricks in there, double backflip, you can't see anything. You're, you're just double feeling. double backflip. Is that the, like you don't come down in between? No, no, no. You go but, twice up in the air before you hit yeah. the ground. Somebody double. just landed quad. What? Yeah. Was it like a mini child? No, no. Who, just who a big ramp. much from... But like, cause you just get a feel for anything, like like any other sport. You just know where everything is, where your scooter sport is, or where. Never really so when you're not thing. when you're not scootering, what do you do? Like, how do you? Uh, obviously, it's a 
it's an adrenaline rush that you want to keep. You, you yeah, wanna, it's pretty hard. You so gotta like, hit that. So yeah, how my do you... whole my whole life, I've done everything adrenaline or traveled or done businesses. So like my threshold of excitement is very high. Of course, so, it's hard. It's hard to me. <laughs> so it's hard. So I try to do anything like ride motorcycles or jet ski or any anything that like is the same excitement. Just something that's something that I'm not good at yet. And so like we just came from the gym just now straight here. So it's pretty Stone fun. Stop. And what businesses do you focus on? Um, we do a lot of like an electric scooter field, like either rental or sell electric scooters. I have my normal freestyle scooter business. Um, what do you do think a, about the, the the birds and all those? I was just in Paris last yeah. weekend and uh, for the first time really ever, yeah. I just didn't want to walk around. So I just downloaded the app yeah. and I got on it. Man, I loved it. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it. the, the future, like micro mobility and the I world agree. is it's going to take a long time for cities to accept it, but I think it's something that this side of the world needs. And I think everybody's going to take it. Like, like today we saw two, like 30 or 40 year old girls riding electric scooters. Like they old? They're not an athlete. They're just riding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah, know. 30 or 40. It's old now. We're old. So old. Um, no, I agree. I think the electric scooter business is, uh, is when I, again, when I was in Paris, the only thing that, that, that got me on it, which I didn't realize was there are certain areas where you were allowed to go in Paris and where you're not allowed to go in Paris. Yeah. So I was, I was going on it and then it just really slowed down, slowed right? Down, yeah. I'm like going three kilometers an hour and I wasn't sure what was going on. Anyway, I get back into the area where you're yeah. allowed to be and it's picked up its pace again and I'm going. Now there was uh, four, four or five percent of the battery was yeah. left and I'm like, man, I, I got to get a new one, yeah. right? So I'm trying to find a new one. But as I find it, I put it down like as in I go to get off this scooter and I'm not allowed to park it there. So it doesn't allow me yeah, yeah. to leave it in that position. In the new position, you have to take it back before you got it. So it's got designated parking spots. So yeah. now I'm on my maps. I've got 3% battery <laughs> and I'm trying to park this thing. It ends up dying on me. I pick it up and now I'm carrying. The whole point of this was so I didn't have to walk. And now I'm carrying this head and they're, and they're heavy. They're not light. And I, until I find it, the yeah. parking area that it's allowed yeah. to be in, and then I set it up and yeah. I get my money and da da da. But yeah. man, it was like three dollars, and I was on it for forty-five minutes. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Oh, it's amazing. Unbelievable. So what happens if you just leave it in the undiagnosed? No, what happens? You get. I guess they got I mean, my credit card. No so. matter what, your credit card and license is registered to that account. So if okay. anything happens to that scooter, like somebody steals it or it hits a car or something, right. it's kind of your fault. You're being paid. Okay, you're getting. You're paying for it. Okay. That's awesome. Um, are you. Uh, would you advise kids to get into in, involved in this sport if you oh yeah i mean i've done kids camps my whole life and uh kind of like either action sports or not action sports but i mean the this is kind of like a sport that you can get into it relatively young like literally two years old you could ride a scooter because it's easy you just push then like i have five-year-olds that i know that can already backflip and like there's so many kids that are progressively moving so fast is just because it's so easy to start. Not like when you get at the top, it's not easy, but to get on a scooter and go to the skate park and just push around, they have a good time. I don't think we're gonna be able to do this, Chris. What's that? I don't think we should change careers. I don't think we can. No, 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 there'll be no chance that I'm doing this, but <laughs> no chance do you freak people out sometimes when there's a scooter just on the street and then you pick it up and start doing it and they're like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? But it's funny because now, like on this side of the world, at least it's not as known to the public, but in America and Europe, like every kid that is like under 20 knows of a professional scooter rider somewhere either from a youtube video or a tv show or somebody so like it's getting pretty popular in like the mainstream eyes that's so cool man and the uh four-time world champion where is the is it is it one event that you've got to compete at to be the world champion or is it a, a number of events throughout um, the year so like they have co qualifiers all around the world and then at the end there's a world championship everybody competes on one day and then best person wins how many people uh it's usually top 50. Oh. is there good prize money involved there is uh, no okay so when i rode competitively like all the time it wasn't that good and then recently the last two years i made it like my mission to make everybody's um how do you explain it kind of like giving back to the sport so i brought a lot of sponsorship money and things like that made my own events and helped the original world championships get a lot of prize money so like now it's way worth it to ride a scooter but when i rode it like, was it, but it, no but it's you're fine. paying it forward yeah, yeah. which is important right no, obviously course. seeing so, it seeing it happen it's something that that's how i built my whole life around so yep. like now to see the top riders actually make money and have fun and get to travel everywhere and compete at the highest level is pretty cool so amazing man i'm just i'm i'm, I'm intrigued to 
it, it's not your usual. Obviously, I'm a basketball player. I'm a professional mm. football player. Yeah, it's yeah. like it, this is this is something very very unique. It's definitely unique because like it's rare that you can build a sport from nothing. There's not really. I can't think of another new sport besides a few years ago. There's lacrosse. But yes. that, that's still 20 years old. But yes. that, that was like a new sport that you could continue to build and originate. But definitely been a fun time. Hold on, we can edit this right now. Are they good? What are they doing? Uh, they forgot something. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so I'm just hearing in the background. Hello. 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 hello? Um, okay. Can we talk about why you're here in the Middle East as well? Can we talk about yep. why you're in Dubai? Yeah. Okay. Pick it up again. Three. Do you want to ask that? You want to kick off with that question? Why we're in? Why you're in Dubai and all that? Why are you here? No, no. Pick, pick, pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> okay. So why are you in Dubai, Kota? Now. Um, this trip, I came just to meet a few friends and had some business meetings. Uh, new stuff we're going to bring to Dubai uh, next quarter. And so we're looking to do a lot of kids type programs, um, either with the skate park or uh, different athletes around the world. And I think it's the next year in Dubai is going to be pretty good for sports and my career as well as a lot of my friends. I think it's amazing because here you have all round good weather. Children is children are the one thing that recession really doesn't really hit and affect. Yeah. And as a mother, I want my kids out the house. Yeah, no, I agree. But ex, um, obviously, ex Dubai and what they do here in the region is unbelievable. Yeah. How they they really do push the extreme sort of sport to the the next level. I feel with obviously Jetman doing his thing, yeah, yeah. and then you got the guys jumping off skyscrapers nonstop. Yeah. Have you have you taken have you jumped out of a plane with a scooter? Are you allowed to do that? Or Not is that, yet. But uh, we're trying we're to talk to ex Dubai to do some wild stuff for the expo. Agreed. Expo yeah. twenty twenty. <laughs> this is this is the big time for Dubai. Yeah. This would be amazing. Yeah. What's the ultimate? Um, is there a stunt or is there something that you've always wanted to do that you haven't done, but it's still in the back of your mind and you're oaring and ahhing it if you should do it or not? Um, Being on the scooter or something else? I mean, there's a lot of stuff like life achievements, but in scootering, I kind of achieved everything, everything I wanted to. Like, so now, like, I achieved competitively, competitive, like, what I wanted to do there and then the event side, the rider management side and stuff like that. So, like, Scootering, I got pretty handled, but the rest of life, I, were, I would like to uh, push electric scooters farther in terms of like racing them around the world. And because, but you've never seen my electric scooters yet. Are they completely? Uh, oh yeah, they're wild. Are Full they, carbon are they, fiber, are they 80 for sale? miles an hour. Yeah. So they, they're selling right now worldwide. Yeah. So we custom make them in LA and then uh, we'll ship them everywhere. I've forgotten. You also said that you're managing young. Yeah. Um, sports yeah young, young athletes hold on can we go back to the like what's the what's the name of the uh well, the, it's called ryan motors ryan motors yeah because yeah, i mean i obviously with with tesla and what they're doing as well I, so I've, imagine you've been in a tesla yeah it's imagine that. you're strapped to the top of a tesla that's what it feels like on i'm not joking oh my god chris strapped to an 80 mile an hour Scooter. I would I, actually pay good money. I am to gadget watch, man. Like, I, like, done, I, I am gadget man. I buy like you know. Okay. As soon as those no, no. hoverboards came Anything. out, right? I I had to whatever it's, it's whatever very, gadgets out. I've got. You have to be very cautious. It's like Re street bike fast. Wow, this would be amazing. And it's silent. I yeah, mean, like it's, it's silent. Just... Two wheel drive, disc brakes, carbon bars, carbon deck. Oh my god! Look at his eyes. <laughs> you don't understand. Like we text at night, so we'll have like um, you know they have those shop things yep. that come up with useless yeah. gadgets. Commercials on Instagram that yeah. you just be like, why no. would anyone want that? We're buying. We're it. buying that. Like I'm we buying go, everything that I possibly we, we can. We send it to each no. other, going, look, oh, we found something that you can hang your feet when you're in an economy gadget. seat. Yeah, gadget. Yeah. Phone. gadget. Yeah. Anything that comes yeah. out, I just need it. Look. But yeah. can I say, does it? I think it's also well, like being again, being around in Paris on yeah. it, and. Actually, at the F1, yeah. remember how we had, remember how you took 19 hours to get to the dinner that we were supposed to do? So I left. Yeah, yes, I, I remember. I like four hours for her to rock up for yeah, something and two. she never rocked up. The only way that I could get back to my hotel yeah. was either walk yeah. or Abu Dhabi had yeah, yeah, the scooters. Yeah. I think, it, I forget what they were orange. I forget what the company was called. My fear was there were people on those things that shouldn't be on yeah. a scooter. Yeah. Like, I don't think they've ever ridden a scooter yeah. in their life before, but for some reason they're, and they're doubling their partners on there. Yeah. And I'm like, this is dangerous. I mean, do, do we think about that? Do even in the States, do they, do they, you don't need a license. Anyone can download the app. No, get but and I get on keep it. in mind that those same people riding the scooters also have a license. Okay. So they drive, you drive so in a car. So they're as dangerous in a car or a scooter. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> do you have, um, do you ever scare yourself? Scare myself? When you're doing these. 
flips? Do you get scared? Uh, not really, no. Oh, yeah. Everything's pretty calculated. Like I, I, I go through things a lot through my head and then when I try the trick or when I do something, I, it's like very calculated. How do you calculate that? Just go through it in your head. Like, do you have a team with you that will do those calculations with you and say, hey, yeah, let's try that? Just me and my brother. So, I mean, we'll just go through a trick or a, a, a new flip or something like that and just go through, like, look at the ramp. What's the speed? How high do you need to go? Um, how's it going to work? Because then you don't try it 100 times and die 100 times. You can just try it three times and land it one of the times. So what are you scared of? Is there anything that you're fearful of? Do you have any fears? Uh, is there anything that... It being, may not because you obviously... Being bored. That's being the, bored is the fear? Yeah. Wow. How are you going to get married? What? You married? No. no. So oh, how is really? It? No, of course I'm 23. not. 23 is a baby. You're 23 years yeah. old? Do not get married. <laughs> You're talking to someone who's divorced. Do not get married <laughs> at the age 30. 30? 30. 30. 35. Okay, 30 you're all right. Now 30 you can start, but yeah. So you, you have, you've achieved all, you've, can I say you're very mature. Okay. Because it, I, I feel like I'm not talking to you. Yeah, and not no, that I any disrespect to a 23-year-old. I know many mature 23-year-olds. No, I understand. You, you are very mature for the yeah. age of 23. Uh, I've what, achieved a lot. Young in this. So. I started like 9 and 10 um, riding scooters. And then I have my own companies at 11. And so I kind of like was really busy from a young age. And then I stopped going to school when I was 13 maybe. So I had a lot of time to focus on my company and my sport. You stopped going to school obviously because of the sport. Yeah. And, and how did the family take that? They were behind My it. My dad was Olympic athlete, so he's like, go for it. <laughs> he was like, go now. Yeah. In what sport was your... He did velodrome cycling in the 80s. Unbelievable. Wow. Just a, yeah, well, unbelievable. Your kids don't so, like, It chance, wouldn't have worked unless <laughs> my dad was an athlete. Because like, if it was a normal, typical family, they'd just say no, no. Go to school. So did you do homeschooling at all or was it just... I tried, but I just didn't have time. So you, you, you finished education at the age of 13? Yeah, I haven't done it. That's, that's unbelievable. But then it's ha- like I have world education. You have world like I've, traveled, you have... I've traveled 300 days since I was 11. Everywhere. Yeah, man, I'm for it. Like my girls now are 10 and 8 and, you know, their report cards came back just recently and their grades were were average to the truth my grades were horrible when i used to go to school but you know i looked at the comments of the teacher and the teacher's comments were like they're fantastic they're always willing to learn they ask the right questions they're polite they're respectful that's actually what i cared about yeah the education side of it and all that i'm like you know because i feel like they're worldly we've got our little company that we've got kids snacks and i get them involved in it so i'm trying to get them to understand what that's the fastest way is just experience like i learned everything the hard way like i know every way not to do anything like in business or sports or anything but that's how you learn fast and it just makes you kind of uh, relate to everybody as quick as possible i believe that it's it's street smart i what they say on mine i was a people person which is yeah you're friends with everyone yeah that's yeah. true you're a people person but my kids are all like straight a students where i don't know where they definitely doesn't come from me this are they, are they really yeah, they really are interesting um and what's the age bracket to to be a competitive what do you call it a scooter scooter, what, what, just scooter freestyle scootering is like freestyle the term. Sco- okay what's the uh like you know, age what's, bracket the, what, what, the, com- what's the, the competitor peak? or in, yeah competitor um, so like in boxing for example you know 28 29 you, you, you're hitting your peak and okay so like keep in mind i'm one of the og people in scootering that's what i'm, I'm saying, 23 and you're 23 that's okay, what i'm trying to so work out we don't there. really have the time to like i don't know what the the peak is um i would say most of the riders that are in either my events or the events around the world are an average of like 16 to 22 like that's a top 20 in the world and then there's a few little kids like 12 and 15 that are really good but it's uh i would say average is like 16 to 20 ish so where do you go from here yeah but 22 exactly if you don't have any street sense or well he's run businesses as we're saying he's got his all he's got so all his businesses but you have the the right mindset and i'm guessing the right people behind you and no. around you to allow you to do that but a uh, another 20 22 year old who has made a decent amount of money and has this fame in in the scootering world and then it just ends yeah you know you've got I to would have say that. kind yeah. of my event structure and sponsorships for teams and things like that is going to help those type of people because we'll educate them like how to use your money or how to invest yeah. in things because that's what i like my whole life is just how to grow things, whether it's a business or career or money or things like that. Because a lot of people just aren't educated. They just like tossed, here's 
you get this for doing this. Well, it's not Maybe. like geography is going to help him or like, you know, no, I know. those yeah. things when he's going to do and run his businesses, is it? So, you know, or, or science. So it's like, well, maybe science for the calculation, no. but you know, that's what I always think. I mean, but it's, I think, you know, he's, he can go on and do anything from here. But also with scootering, it's an awesome sport for um, switching to another sport. So like, for example, if you Balance. rode a scooter from a kid to 22, you could easily switch to BMX and be one of the best athletes in the world because right. it's the same. It's relatively like the same tricks, just bigger. Hmm. And so you could pr jump from being the best in scootering to give it a year, you could be the best in BMX. And there's so two, two of those cases to do that. Wow. What's next? Yeah. Um, I'm very busy with business and things yeah. like that around the world. But, no, but um, do you want to continue a different sport or you continue this one? I still ride scooters almost every day just for fun and I progress by myself. Yeah. Um, I don't really ride events, not to be cocky, but I just got bored. I guess like, like I knew how to win, I knew what to do. I knew the tricks and so I just, it was like repetition of, I knew I expected to win. So it was like, it was just You were so good that it got boring. That's yeah, amazing. Was. I want to do so. I want to be so good at something in my life that it becomes boring. That's fan, no, that's honestly that's amazing. Yeah. When you when you're competing at such a level, whether you're just beating everyone, uh, what countries around the world dominate the sport now? Is it still the states or England, Australia? Is it by miles? England above above the state above yeah. Americans. Yeah. Really, England. Both of yeah, I'm sure the reasoning right. is because your governments, England or Australia and England, um, pay for the skate parks. Huh. And how much does a scooter cost if I buy it from your company? What do we, what do we, we uh, usually sell them from like $85 to $400 in a box. So you just walk out. Put the 80 mile together. an hour one? No, no, no. The freestyle no. scooters. Like, no, the Tesla, know. the, the oh, electric ones. Um, we sell them 6000 to $8,000. Wow, man. I was going to say, yeah. you told me $80. I was like, I'll take <laughs> 10 right now yeah. then. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is like cream of the crop if you, oh, if it's you, the best thing this is it like you could put it next to pagani and it looked the same like the, the quality can we get a photo put up of the uh the scooter please in this right now if you're watching it on youtube you or, gotta see some videos what? though like i'm flying around corners at like 50 miles an hour and it's amazing my gosh super cool man well listen uh glad, glad that you came onto the podcast i'm glad that we're glad that you're here in dubai yep. as well excited um, i'm sure i'll see you a lot in the next year you hanging out here for a while you'll yeah, be in and out no, we'll do a lot of stuff this year okay I'm going to definitely send my boys down to the skate park. Yeah, I'm not going to send my girls down. There are too many boys around there. I'll have to go out there. Shall I start flexing? Just keep away from my girls. I know. You know? My boys are or petrified you skater boys. of them. I know, you, I know your type. <laughs> girls always love a skater boy. You know, I used to try. I wanted to be a skate. I used to try to ride a skateboard in Australia. Yeah. You grow up. But where in, did you grow up? What's in Sydney. Sydney. What's suburb? Um, oh, so you know that well. Yeah, yeah. So we grew up in an area called Riverwood, but then we moved to Balmain. Okay. Right, and then we're in the. Then I lived in Paddington and Kings Cross for a while yeah, before yeah. I left. Kings but, Cross, wild. Yeah, yeah, crazy, <laughs> crazy. So I, uh, but growing up, I wanted to be one of the cool. Like my mates all had skateboards, and yeah. I had a skateboard, and but then they started getting really good at it. Right. And so I wanted to start to get really good at yeah. it. So we would take our skateboards into the city and we would just ride, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I didn't know enough about it, but my wheels, I remember on the skateboard yeah. were really small, right? Yeah. And I still remember this one time going through Central Park near Town Hall yeah. and I was skating, we're all skating. And I wasn't that good, but I wanted to be good. They but were keep always- in, Keep in mind, there's very big hills in Sydney. Like, yeah, unbelievable. It, yeah, it's crazy. It's not easy to ride, yeah, yeah. but then just a little rock about yeah. that big. No, I know. <laughs> but right under the tire, yeah. the wheel, mm -hmm. I remember flipping, okay. I concussed myself, yeah. and I remember having a massive graze of blood down. I was like probably 13, 14 yeah. years old. I remember still walking into KFC called Kentucky Fried Chicken back then, saying, I need a Band-Aid, you got anything for me? And they cleaned me all up last time I ever got on the skateboard. No. That for me was enough for me to say, this is not this is not what I could do. You do you feel like a rock star up there? Do girls like, you know, of course. throw themselves? I mean, you have the ramps doing what you do <laughs> yeah. and you land and girls will be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Like for my whole life, I focused on what I was doing and that, that that's what I focused on. Um, yeah, because what do you do? Pack the girl in the suitcase with you, I suppose. You can't take, they're, they're, they're so young and they're not these young... Can you imagine if this that little girl no. came and said I was going to go and travel with him? It's yeah, not, yeah. Not Mom, I've met a pro freestyle scooter. We're traveling the world together. Uh, yes. You won't be getting married until the age of 30, okay? I've told you that now. Remember that advice. I don't think but he's why? in any hurry. What's the downside? Because it, you just... <laughs> that's that's how we please Because he's getting married. Let me this, see. I'm getting year. married this year again. <laughs> okay. It took, you know... So it's do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Yeah, no, go, okay, so I got married when I was uh, 26 years right. old, 
and it was very quick. I met the girl and we were married within six months. And okay. you, you just, I am so <laughs> different as a person. Okay. You don't know yourself. You're three different at people. The, I'm turning uh, 40 next okay. year. And I am so different than I was at the age of 23. And okay. I look back and there's no regrets because I have two beautiful Can daughters. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why? You see, people got married and with the mindset that we're going to have one marriage when we were dying at 50. We're now dying at 100. Why does marriage mean you can only have one marriage? Maybe you're meant to have a few stories. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not getting that. I'm not going to get married because oh, I'll get married again later. <laughs> Want to make, I want to. I want to be married to one person. And that's what you want. Yeah. You want to have a beautiful family with a wife, the kids. Years. You want all that. That's what you want for a hundred. I mean, years. I'm pretty big on commitment, so yeah. Oh. And you want that. But what I'm saying is that life advice that I wish I knew back then. And again, no regrets because I got two beautiful children. But <laughs> I wish, and I, I would, I would have waited till I was probably around the early 30s before I really did sort of get into a relationship. Then I probably would have got married around that time. You never know. You live and learn, no. right? And now I'm getting married for the second time around at the age of 40, and uh, I, can't, you know, I'm very happy about it. Welcome but, to our therapy session. Yeah, yeah but like you know, you're 23 years old. You got a whole life ahead. You got good money behind <laughs> you. You're a world. <laughs> Champion. Yeah, that's good. That's perfect. You know, I, 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 who was I telling? I was speaking to one of the guys from One Direction, Niall Horan, the exact same thing. He was like, I said, bro, you have so much money. You're good looking. You have your whole career ahead of you. Why you do not get in a I relationship? I think this conversation might be aimed at me and not you. So what? if I were you, <laughs> I would like run. No, but seriously, I always, because you always hear these headlines of like these amazingly rich multimillionaires who are 22 years old getting engaged. And you're going, you're 22 years old. Why because would you lonely. get engaged? They get lonely. They travel all the time. I you're in a hotel it, room by yourself. Your family's at home and you get lonely. So I, you find the young girl and that's what happens. So that's what I'm saying. You know, like, absolutely. We change, as you know, my husband said to me, it was like being married to four different women. Yeah. Not in a good way. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, listen, um, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Uh, Coda, thank you so much for joining us on the uh, on our podcast. We've had a really, really good time, and we hope to get you back on yeah. at some stage as well. No, definitely. Thanks I for having me. Follow your relationship. Yeah, yeah, I'll be watching your Instagram. If I see a female on there, I'll be coming. Coda, you can follow him. I've got all the links down down below. Not that you probably need the followers. I think you. How many how many followers you got on Instagram? I don't know, five hundred thousand. Yeah, that's all. All right, um, a lot. So more he probably doesn't need it. Yeah, more, more than, than you. me. Um, but yeah, well, that, that's very cool. I, I think we'll wrap up this episode. I like that episode. It was a little bit of everything. It's a bit of everything. All right, next episode, I'm going to talk about my Botox. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, no, but you've just left them all hanging. That's coming up next. <laughs> next. All right. Kind of thank you so much okay, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. It's Chris Fade and Caroline Stabry's Not So Epic Podcast. Brought to you by NMC Healthcare and Cosmic Surge. Head to Cosmic Surge.com.